In the first few weeks of trading, the S&P 500 is down about 6.4%, the Dow is down 5%, and the Nasdaq is officially down over 10%, meaning it has officially entered a correction from recent highs. And everyone is asking, are we officially in a bear market? Today, we're going to dive into that question, and the answer might surprise you. By the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of defining a bear market, bull market, and correction, why only looking at the broad indices could be very misleading, are any sectors in a bear market today, how to find deals in bear markets, and what are a few major risks to the market right now. And on the topic of investing, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this part of the video, Wealthfront. We've officially entered the new year, and I bet everyone here is looking to improve their personal finances and investing in 2022. And if that feels at all overwhelming, you need to check out Wealthfront. Wealthfront is an automated investing platform designed by financial experts that uses software to help you find the right portfolio to grow your money over the long term. So it's essentially effortless investing. I remember when I was first going through what felt like a personal finance renaissance. It actually happened only a few years ago, but the second I grasped how powerful the concepts were like compound interest, I wish I had started all this personal finance stuff the second I was born. Now obviously a baby version of Matthew would have no idea how to invest, but with Wealthfront, it's actually a lot easier than you might expect. With Wealthfront, it just takes a few minutes to sign up and you can even see your net worth and all your accounts in one easy to use app. From there, let Wealthfront do the work. Their software automatically handles the trading, portfolio rebalancing, and even tax loss harvesting. And what's really cool about Wealthfront is it tries to get to know the real you. When you sign up, they ask you a series of questions such as your risk tolerance, time horizon, and more. Whether it's your very first portfolio or you're looking for more sophisticated strategies, Wealthfront's automated investing can do more with your money. They're also one of the few companies who actually discloses their annual returns, which as someone who values that kind of transparency, I think it's pretty impressive. Moreover, they were recently voted best robo advisor by both NerdWallet in 2022 and Investopedia in 2020. So start off the new year with Wealthfront by using the link in my description and get up to your first $5,000 managed completely free for life. And thanks again to Wealthfront for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, getting back to the video. First, what is a bear market versus a bull market versus a correction? Let's review some definitions. A bear market is typically defined as a prolonged price decline in the equity markets, often signaled by a drop of 20% or more from recent highs. This usually happens when there's a lot of pessimism and negative investor sentiment within the investing community. This is often caused by changes in monetary policy or macroeconomic events, and a lot of times the bear markets are triggered by events that no one ever saw coming. A bull market on the other hand simply refers to an extended period of time where equity markets continue to rise. Typically in a bull market there is optimism and investors continue to expect prices to rise again often seen hand in hand with positive or expansionary monetary policy. The last definition we will cover is a correction. Investors typically think of corrections as when the market falls at least 10% from recent highs but YouTubers like to call this this a crash. The thing is, these bear markets can vary significantly in length. So is the upcoming bear market that we're told we're supposed to have going to be a long-term one that's sustained or a short-term one? Of course, during a longer-term bear market, there are typically many more bad things happening, leading to a sustained stock market decline. Unemployment is typically high, earnings growth for companies is below average, and oftentimes we are considered to be in an economic recession. This chart shows the bear markets that we've experienced since the 1950s and the average recovery time for each. Also, I've highlighted the bear markets that coincided with the economic recession and most of the longer term bear markets will coincide with an economic recession. In the year 2000, the bear market lasted 31 months, almost three years, and then it took 56 months to recover, nearly five years. In 2007, the bear market lasted 17 months or a year and a half, and then they had a recovery period of 49 months or about four years. And on the other hand, the COVID crisis in February 2020 led to a one month bear market and a five month recovery. Now that we've given some examples and covered the definitions, it is important and imperative to remember that a correction bear market or bull market can apply not only to the indexes and indices, but also individual stocks. This gets us to our next point in the video. Don't just look at the broad market indices to determine whether or not we're in a 
bear market. Remember, the S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index of the largest 500 publicly traded companies in the US. By market cap weighted, that means the companies with the largest market cap will contribute a larger percentage to the return of the index. And those with a smaller market cap, think companies numbers 400 to 500 on the list, they'll have a much smaller contribution. At the end of 2021, the top 10 companies in the index accounted for 30% of the market capitalization of the index. As a result, these companies ended up massively skewing the index performance. The reason this is important for this particular discussion is because if these companies are having a strong, strong year, or if they are down but not down that much, they could be hiding the negative performance of many other smaller companies. In other words, despite the fact that the S&P 500 is technically not in a bear market, that does not mean mean that many, many stocks within that very indices cannot be in a bear market. All right, so just as an example, as of January 6, 2022, Yahoo Finance's screen of just technology companies within the S&P 500 that were down 20% or more from their 52-week high. That 20% is, again, the level that's generally considered a bear market. 25 companies are on that list, 25. Some of these are huge names, companies that you'd recognize like Twitter, PayPal, Salesforce, Intel, and even NVIDIA, which has been one of the hottest stocks of the last few years in the entire market. Peeling back the onion and looking beyond just broad market indices is really important when thinking about whether some companies might be in a bear market or not. These stocks on an individual basis are technically in a bear market. And similar to the S&P 500, the NASDAQ is a market cap weighted index as well except it has even greater concentration. The NASDAQ index is made up of 100 primarily technology companies and the top 10 stocks make up over 50% of the index market cap weight. If Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon have incredible years, it might not matter what 50 other companies in the NASDAQ do during the year since the cap weight is so skewed. The point of all this is that based on the simple definition of a 20% stock price decline, it does not appear that the broad market indices are in a bear market, though the NASDAQ is now in a correction. However, looking at individual stocks tells a different story. 85 stocks in the S&P 500, so nearly 20% of the index, are down at least 20% from their 52 weeks highs as of January 12th, 2022. Many of these stocks are spread across many different industries, some of which may not be too surprising. They include gaming and leisure, healthcare, technology, financials, and airlines. Now, a key ability is to be able to find stocks in a bear market that are a good deal. And you can start by doing a simple screen, similar to what Yahoo Finance put together for us that we showed earlier in the video. Another tool is to look at the S&P sectors to see if there are any certain sectors that might be worth paying attention attention to. So let's take a quick look at the performance of the main industries and sectors. This table shows the performance of each of the sector ETFs over the last four weeks, 13 weeks, and 26 weeks to see if we can find any long-term sustained negative performance at the sector level. Based on our traditional definitions and the numbers you see here, there isn't a sector that's even in correction territory. This said, there are a number of sectors that have slightly negative performance over the last four week period, which show a bit of weakness in the market, but it's certainly not showing any sustained long-term weakness across any sector. And then to take it one step further, you could also do screeners on the company level by using tools like Finviz. You can change filters such as market cap, profit margins, growth rates, valuation, price action, etc. In this market, I personally focus on valuation, profitability, and distance from 52 week high. All right, now to reset the scene, Overall, it seems like we are in a secular, long-term bull market dating back to the recovery from the Great Recession. While there have been some downturns, they have all been relatively short-lived and the long-term trend has been decidedly upward. That being said, one could very easily make the case that certain groups or pockets of the stock market are definitely in a bear market right now. Now, personally, I see us as kind of going through a valuation reset rather than an aggressive, scary bear market. To help you visualize what I imagine it as being, I think valuation climbed straight up just like this in 2020. And then they were supposed to look a bit more like this, a bit more level and reasonable. And now what we're seeing right now is a lot of those stocks correcting and crashing and falling below what would be a reasonable valuation, perhaps getting oversold. But once we reach a bottom, and eventually we shall, in my opinion, the good companies, the quality companies, the good businesses, they will rise back to the top and continue this upward trajectory with their valuation, their fundamentals and all that stuff. But all of the bad companies, the companies that never deserve to be at such a high valuation or premium in the first place, they're all going to stay down here. Now, in case we are headed for a bear market, here are a few things that could put a pause to this rally. 
Inflation, of course, it's no surprise. You've probably seen it on the news every single day, but some of the biggest headlines recently have been about wage inflation and commodity price inflation. Practically, for companies, this means that costs are going to go up, which typically means that their margins and profitability will get compressed. If wage pressure continues to rise, as we are currently seeing, this means that employers will need to pay employees more money, which is a higher overall expense for them. Similarly, if input costs of materials and other items that companies need to make their products keeps going up, then it also increase expenses. Now, there is a chance that some of this increase in prices gets passed along to the end buyer, but this is hard to know how much they'll be able to increase prices to the consumers, and it's also why pricing power is so important during a period of inflation. As a result, longer-term sustained inflation can definitely pose a risk to earnings growth and thus the stock market. Another way to explain what I just said simply is if you took the lemonade stand example and say you had a, a nice little girl named Sally run the lemonade stand for you, but all of a sudden you have to pay Sally more and now your lemonade and your sugar cost more as well and you can't raise the price of your lemonade very much because there are 10 other lemonade stands on the very same corner as you. So yeah, your lemonade stand is not going to be quite as profitable as before and therefore the earnings for your business will decrease and if earnings decrease, suddenly your price to earnings ratio looks very expensive. So so to fix that, the market drops your stock price. In addition to company earnings, inflation will hurt consumer confidence. If consumers continue to see prices of goods that they buy in the store keep going up, they will be more concerned about spending the money. Thus, it would slow purchasing activity, meaning companies aren't going to have as many people or customers coming to their stores or using their services, and therefore, they'll see lower revenue. Rising rates is another concern, with companies have had the benefit of access to cheap capital and low borrowing costs for the last pretty much 12 years. If access to cheap capital goes away by an increase in interest rates, which is broadly expected to start happening very soon, then this could slow growth. As you can see here, the federal funds rate has been kept at nearly zero since 2008 crisis, except for a period in late 2015 through 2020, when it was gradually increased. The blue and green dots forecast where the FOMC and market participants expect rates to be in the next few years, and both of them expect them to increase. Rising rates are especially a risk to high growth stocks that depend heavily on cheap capital to accelerate the growth of their business. And from a technical standpoint, Higher rates will dampen the value of future earnings and put downward pressure on analyst target stock prices. And finally, taxes. The last piece we'll touch on is the corporate tax. While nobody seems to know what's going on in Congress when it comes to passing new legislation, the common theme is that taxes will go up if Democrats get their way here. If corporate taxes go up, this will directly impact company earnings, making it harder to sustain higher earnings growth rates. Having less capital available for reinvestment into the business or inorganic growth such as M&A activity is likely another headwind for stocks. With what you hopefully have learned, you should now be looking at the potential bear market in front of us and asking yourself, is it going to be short term or long term? Additionally, you should be thinking beyond just the broad based stock indices and dig deeper into the sector level and the company level. Just because the index looks to be performing well or half decently or not being dragged down quite as dramatically does not mean that all the stocks in the index are not getting crushed too. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed the video. All I ask is that you hit that like button so it gets to more people and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next one.